All right guys, Jay Siemens here. Welcome back to another video. We are going fishing today, but first we're doing a little modification to the boat. And that is actually today's sponsor. It's a company called Dorado. This is something, a product I've seen around before. It's called a catch and release boat system. Essentially this thing will latch the front of your boat and release it with the handle. So I, I'm all about efficiency. I've got the rod racks on the ceiling so I don't have to get out of the boat. I've got the extension cord so I can charge. I'm always trying to save time wherever I can, make things easier for myself so I can make more videos. And I think this is gonna do just that. I do a lot of fishing by myself. It's sometimes, you know, a little tougher launching, loading by yourself. This is gonna be a pretty amazing tool. So it's called Drotto. We're gonna install it on the front. It looks pretty easy based off the instructions. And then we are gonna go fishing and hopefully boat a couple fish. That would be, uh, that'd be nice. All right, here we go. Installation, remove the front bow stop from your trailer. All right, so that is that piece right there. We're gonna knock this out. She gone. Uh, install the bolt latch using one of two mounting holes on the latch. Adjust the angle so the bolt lines up with the same pitch angle. I think, so I'm gonna wanna match that angle like that. But I think I need to move this whole piece back. So there's a couple bolts and I can loosen the whole front of this thing. Now I'll do the roller up top here. This is actually, quite easy because I'm pretty mechanically challenged. So this is easy enough for even me to handle. This piece right here will actually, you want it loose enough so there's some play in it. What we need to do is we need to adjust the angle on this whole baby. Oh. All right, so we just changed the angle. We're doing lots of things. As I said, this thing should have some play to it. I like that, I think that's great. Okay, the boat can still move that, but it's got a little bit of play. The handle, and then the pin. Well, final couple pieces, putting the handle on. You can adjust the angle accordingly, obviously you don't want it hitting into your boat. The Drotto, catch and release. Well, we're gonna head to the launch and try this baby out and then we're gonna go fishing. All right, well, we made it to the lake. We're gonna try out the Drotto for the first time. I am told it's good to take the handle off when doing any long trailering, so we're gonna throw the handle on. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna disconnect the chain and the main latch. The thing is, if you have a roller boat, you do not wanna do that until the boat's floating. This is still like, full liability for you if, if the boat comes off the trailer, obviously. But what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna disconnect it here. I'm almost touching the water. And then when I get in the water, I can just pull the lever. And a little easier than me leaning over the side when I'm by myself. So right now I'm gonna make sure I'm going far enough back till I'm floating. All right, so I'm gonna back it up till I'm floating. I'm gonna hop in and one pull the lever and she goes. There we go. And now we're free. I'll just drive right off. It works. Well, we're back on the lake, baby. Back in the Alumacraft. It feels good. You know, spent some time in Florida, good vacation, but now we're home, home water. I don't know what we're gonna fish for today. The water's still pretty cold. I'm gonna eat a lot of beef jerky and then probably gonna slide into some back bays, maybe fish the mouths, see if there's some bass sliding up, look for some pike, maybe some crappies. I don't have a game plan. That's what I love about this place. This neck of the neck of the woods is you can do multi-species in the same day. So that's the game plan. And the Drotto, it worked for the first time. We'll see. I'm sure there's going to be situations where it uh, comes in even more handy, but definitely launching by myself and be able to pull that handle. It's good. I like it. I don't know jerky's good. Delicious and nutritious. We're back, baby! We've got some Angler's Edge mapping on board today. It's definitely helpful. It can be intimidating boating around when you don't have proper mapping. They added some new lakes again. I think they added uh, more of Shoal Lake. They added a couple lakes in Northern Manitoba, some lakes in Saskatchewan. I'm gonna just live scope this hump straight ahead. All right, so the spots I'm kind of looking at back here is a big spawning bait. I might go more for pike in there, but I think some of these little rocky points, rock piles at the mouth might be where the bass stack up. So right now we've got a rock reef that comes up to, I think around 10 feet of water here. Typically they'll start staging out in front and as the water warms, they'll push further back to where they're gonna spawn. 
pre-spawn smallmouth. Maybe a pike, maybe some crappies back in those reeds. There's a fish. I'm pretty sure there's bass in there. I'm pretty sure those are fish. There's definitely some fish in there. I got such a mess of rods in here right now. So if you take the little divider out of your rod rack, you can fit so many more rods. It is, you know, sometimes tougher to get at them. But this will be a pike rod. Grab a pike rod out. I don't know if I'm gonna need all those rods, but I got them out. I'm gonna get a swim bait, maybe a Ned. Might be a fish 55 feet away. We'll see. There's my bait. It's gonna go real close to him. Oh, there we go. First fish of the season. Actually not first. Well, I predicted we were gonna get pike. Not on this spot, but hey, the old gator. Gotta start somewhere. Exhilarating. Hit a little, little too hard to be a small moth. Let's see, there's fish there. There's a bunch of fish on top. This might be some small mouths. Oh, I just got hit. There's my bait. Oh, there's a bunch there. I'm gonna try maybe a Ned on another one. And then we can crawl on the bottom a little more. Oh yeah, here we go. There's gotta be some bass in there. Yep. First smallmouth of the year. Species number two. Not big, but we saw a couple on the live scope. I can confirm they're very smallmouth bass. All right, we'll keep moving. All right. <clears throat> I was definitely seeing 15 feet right off this rock. There's a couple. These are looking bassy. Jeez. Or maybe just a loon. Loony. Ooh, hopefully that's not a loon. There's a loon following my bass right now. This is interesting. It's a nicer bass. Wow, that fish is beat up. I wonder what happened to that guy. Probably had a battle with a loon. There you go. Pretty ugly fish. All right, there's a bunch of fish under us. I'm just gonna do a little toss here. Look at this. There's another couple of fish sliding on the bottom. Never fished this spot before. I'm just letting that jig hit the bottom and then just slowly reel and let it bounce, reel and let it bounce bottom. In a situation where they're not chasing as much and I might use the Ned rig and just kind of hop it and spot a little more, but look around here and see what we can find. Okay, one of these has to bite. Ooh, that's the biggest one yet, I think. There we go. Little blind bill. Look at that. One eyed smallmouth. He's got a good eye. That's probably how he found that little elasto bug, indestructo bug. I always get the name wrong. Something that's pretty funny that I hear all the time, people are like, so frostbite fishing, do their baits only work in the winter? Can I only use them ice fishing? Well, you can use them year round. But they also do make a couple more so open water based products. And this little bug here is a sweet little Ned style bait, but it's got the stretchy plastic. These things you can catch a bajillion fish on. I love the color, love how it floats, little appendages on the side. And see so if we can catch a couple more of those bigger ones. Not a bunch of weeds out here. Oh, bit me off. All right, well, there's still a bunch of fish kicking around. This is the weedless style. We are fishing on the edge of some weeds, a little more compact that way. Ooh, that's a good one. Well, that's the deal. You get some decent mapping. You don't have to be scared about hitting rocks. And I just picked a spot on the map that looked good. Just a little rocky point, all shallow. Warm water is so key. I feel like I say this in all my spring videos, but that's something I learned guiding. Something I remember learning from Aaron is just like warm water is key in the spring. So these rocks will warm up and retain heat that shallower muddy bottom bays. So when you look at a map, when the ice first goes out, those fish will likely still be in their wintering areas. But once you get a couple warm sunny days, those fish 
depends on the species, they can go shallow just incredibly fast. So like pike, you can find shallow right away. Bass sometimes will take a little bit, um, but yeah, it's been whatever couple weeks of warm, sunny weather and the bass are shallow. We're catching them in six, seven feet. Might do a little more smallmouth fishing and then uh, maybe we'll try casting for a pike, who knows? Another one! Well, I'm excited to say that after a couple year hiatus, this year I'm coming back and I'm fishing the Kenora Bass International. One of the biggest bass tournaments in Canada with my buddy Mark Tully, and this gets me pumped. I don't fish that many tournaments, but KBI is just, it's a special one. Yeah, I took one year off, another year was canceled, so it's been a bit, I'm excited to get back, and I think tournaments are kind of a trap. I mean, if you're good, you can make money in tournaments, but I think uh, there's a lot of donors. I don't know, I like making videos more than I like fishing tournaments, but I still do like the competitive thing once in a while. And I think the only way to get better at fishing tournaments is fishing them. It's a very humbling experience. Catching those smallmouth makes me think about KBI. My best finish is fifth. Got fifth twice, so maybe this is the year. Got a faster boat. It's gotta be worth something. This point is definitely the sweet spot. You can just see, it's, it's maybe tough to see through the camera lens, but there's just a couple lighter, bolder spots. And the thing is, I get a lot of comments about, you've got so much technology, you know, it's not even relatable. Well, without, let's say you don't have a graph, right? But you still want mapping. Well, there's something for the Avenza, for that Angler's Edge mapping, you can download it on your phone. So right there, if you're watching this video, you probably have a phone. So that kind of takes out, you know, that part of the equation. As far as, you know, the live scope thing, yeah, I mean, live scope is definitely great for pinpointing fish. It's an amazing tool, but right now I can visibly see boulders sticking off the point. I can look at the map. I can assume I'm in five to 10 feet of water. Yeah, sometimes I'm catching, casting at individual fish. Those last couple I caught, I didn't see individual fish. I was just kind of fan casting this point. So we'll see if we can get another one here. Angle myself differently. We could also... Wow, that fish was just swimming towards me. Pretty good average size. There you go. I don't know, like maybe not three pounders, two and a half pounders. But I ain't complaining. Like I was mentioning earlier with that mapping, Good mapping just gives you the confidence to rip around on, you know, sometimes I'll hear people say, oh, that, that lake is so dangerous. And you know, it keeps, keeps people off certain lakes, but the thing is, hate it or love it, lakes are getting mapped, you know? Garmin's mapping more lakes, Lake Master's mapping more lakes, Angler's Edge mapping is mapping more lakes. And you go to the States, pretty much everything's mapped. It's, I don't think it'll ever get to quite that point in Canada, but any of the main lakes that get any sort of fishing pressure, any sort of tournaments, they're gonna get mapped. Goes back to that same discussion of, you know, being smart with the resource, practice and catch and release, proper fish handling, selective harvest, all those things. Because the, the technology is not going anywhere. Neither are the little pike. Ah! There we go. It's a good bass. This clear water is amazing. Well, this point's definitely been the best spot. We're gonna hopefully pluck a couple more. I think we're gonna move, because there's always a better spot, or at least I try to think so. I think we'll make a bit of a run. Maybe we'll focus a little more on pike. We've kind of caught a bit of everything. I would like to see a bigger pike, but this has just been a fun spring day. A little bit of everything. The indestructo bug has been shining. Yeah, just get to be back in the Alumacraft. So when we were on the main lake, it was 44, 44 degrees or so. We've got 51 and we're not even halfway back to bay. This is exactly what I'm talking about for the warm water. Now we're looking for pike. The water's surprisingly clear here, so I'm probably gonna stand up on the front, use the trolling motor and try to see some fish. What a day. The old headbanger box. I don't wanna go too big. Something like this will be pretty perfect. Black and silver. Fifty-six point eight. Where are the pike at? This is primo. Man, am I getting lots of follows? Oh, he's coming. 
He's behind it. Got him. <laughs> that was sweet. That's a little better. That bait is gone. That bait got T-boned. Look at that bait. Gone. All right, a little bit of bud, blood, a little bit of blood, the bait's out. Sweet. That was sweet. They're aggressive. We just need to find a little bigger one. Oh, that felt way bigger than it was. You know, 15 year old Jay would have been losing his mind with this pike. And I've just gotten so jaded to pike fishing. Not jaded, spoiled is I guess the proper term. I remember when every 30 inch fish was an accomplishment. If I was eating pike, that would be absolutely perfect right there. Cartwheel. 59 degree water. And it was like 44, 45 in the main lake. That's such a huge difference. I'm seeing everything back here. Suckers, walleye, pike, pelicans, bald eagles. Oh, oh. That's got a little bit of weight. Never mind. It felt good at the start. What the heck? Smallmouth back here with a buddy with him. Look, there's another one following him. Oh, there's a whole pack of them. Oh my gosh, I think those are all smallies. So weird to catch them in a muddy bay. That's, look how fat that bass is. There is everything back here. Cool. I can see them all over here. Maybe I'll try a swim bait. They're swimming towards me. Oh, ho, 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 ho. those are smallies. Ooh, baby. Oh wow, that's probably the biggest one of the day. Look at that. Oh, I'm, a, I'm a happy man. Oh, ho, ho, ho. you go looking for pike and you find the bass. Decent. Ooh, he's gonna cut my line. Nice. It's a good one. Saw that little brown blob sitting on the bottom and pretty cool sight fishing pike down south. All right, I'm going back. We're good. Warm water is king. I just see these dark spots and I cast at them and half the time they turn out to be fish. The other half, they're weeds. This bait here, the headbanger swim bait, the banger ribs, 10 pound fluoro. This is a 710 rod. This is a prototype J. Seaman Signature Series rod, which I'm working on with a company called Striker Rods, but I don't want to just release any rod. I want to make sure it's perfect. So far, I do really like it. Might need to put a new plastic on. This is what that pike came on, a bunch of the smallies. It's my favorite color, what's it called? Sexy Shad. It's a bigger size banger ribs, 3.4 inch, good size for Walleye, bass, apparently pike. And then this is just a homemade head, just to do it molds. Ooh. Ooh. This feels big. Oh, that's a big wall. No, it's a big pike. Well, we switched to smallmouth lures, and then sure enough, we get the biggest pike of the day. I might net this guy. That's a nice gator. I knew they'd be around. I got distracted by the smallmouth. See if we can land this guy before the line breaks. I don't see the bait at all. Oh, there we go. Whew. Yeah, baby. Day made, mission complete. Not a tank, probably like a 30, 36, 37 incher maybe. Testing out the new rod. All right, there we go. Not the fattest pike, but uh, man, quite the surprise. I mean, we knew we'd be back here, but didn't expect you'd eat the bass bait. Maybe 37? Good noggin on her. A lot of people think you gotta fly in to catch a big pike, but there are a lot of big pike in our backyard. Bye, baby. That bait and jig got trashed. 
but sometimes they just want a little, little meal in the spring. <laughs> Look at that jig. I think that was because of the net, but still pretty funny. Well, I'm gonna keep casting the swim bait, catch some smallies, catch some pike. That was good. Well, that is a wrap. Um, the key, find the warm water, you find everything. All the fish, it seemed like that was, that was a ton of fun. Good way to kick off the season in Northwest Ontario. Huge shout out to Drotto for uh, sponsoring this video. Very cool device, very helpful if you're a guy that fishes by yourself a lot like me. Like I said, the strap, safety chain, you wanna be extra safe, you wanna use them, but you pull the lever, drops you into the water, you're we got the cool GoPro shot of coming in there and it grabbing it. So pretty cool device, excited to use it more and put it through the paces. But uh, yeah, I will link them below. You can check them out. They are made in the States. And uh, that's pretty much all I got for today. But please wear your life jackets. Uh, I don't want to hear any uh, sad stories this summer. I hope to see you on the water and I'm going to go fishing again tomorrow.